In this video, I'm going to equip you with the latest setup and optimization tips from the RPCS3 community and get those PlayStation 3 games running the way they were meant to be played. I research so you don't have to. Stick around. Guess who's back? Back again. Welcome back guys. I've got some really cool things to share with you today, including a little utility I just created to help you download PlayStation 3 game updates. As I was researching available game update options, I realized there aren't too many convenient ones out there. The available options either required you to install some sketchy software or required too many steps. My little utility allows you to type in a game ID and get back a list of available game updates complete with clickable links. Best of all, it's lightweight and open source for transparency. I made this as I was in the process of making this video, so if there's interest, I'll likely improve on it. But I'll demo what I've got in just a bit. Another thing I'm excited to announce is my new Discord server. Here, myself and the community will be able to answer your questions and generally stay connected. I've got sections for emulator discussions, cheat engine topics, and my cheat tables. It's brand new and I'm excited to connect with you guys, so come say what's up. Alright, let's get into it. First and foremost, and as always, update your GPU drivers. Okay, the first thing I like to do is to create a folder to store the files. Next, you want to navigate to the RPCS3 website to download the emulator itself. Linux users will use this link, but this demo will focus on Windows users, so we'll click Download for Windows. As you can tell, the file we downloaded is zipped with an app called 7-Zip. You'll need an app like 7-Zip or WinRAR to be able to open and extract these archives. Now we'll open the downloaded file, select all the files within, and drag into the RPCS3 directory we created earlier. Next we'll move over to the Quick Start Guide. Here you'll find the other download links we'll need as well as the RPCS3 recommended minimum requirements. For acceptable results, you want your system to at least fall under the minimum requirements listed. As you scroll down the page, you'll see the other two downloads we'll need to make RPCS3 run. PlayStation 3 System Software and Visual C++ 2019 Redistributable. You can think of RPCS3 as the PlayStation 3 hardware, and the PlayStation 3 System Software as its operating system. This link will take us directly to the PlayStation website where we'll download the RPCS3 firmware. This is ideal as we don't have to search the web for it and potentially download from an untrustworthy source. Now we'll just drop the file into our RPCS3 directory. Next, we'll grab the Visual C++ file and run it. After it installs, it will prompt you to restart your system. Since I've already installed it, I'll just click on Close. While we're here, let's check out the Compatibility tab. Here is where you can find out if the game you want to play is compatible with RPCS3. You can also find the recommended settings for your specific game to help it run as smooth as possible. For example, if we wanted to find out the recommended settings for Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year Edition, we can simply search for it. As you can see, these are the recommended settings listed. While this serves as a great starting point, there are likely additional settings we can tweak to squeeze a few more frames out, and we'll cover that in the optimization section shortly. Okay, let's launch RPCS3 for the first time. When you first launch RPCS3, you'll be greeted by this welcome screen. This gives us a few quick reminders such as installing the firmware and checking out the quick start guide. Let's confirm we're aware of the quick start guide, click Do Not Show Again, and click Continue. Once RPCS3 is open, the first thing we'll need to do is install the firmware we downloaded earlier. When it's finished, you'll see this confirmation dialog. When you click OK, it'll begin compiling PPU modules. When that finishes, we're ready for the next step. Now we'll set our games directory so RPCS3 knows where our games are stored. Just go to File, click on Add Games, then select the folder containing your games. 
Now sometimes you may receive this error when loading your games directory, but RPCS3 has an alternate way to load your game, and I'll show you that now. To demo this, I'll need to delete my games.yml file RPCS3 created when I loaded my games earlier. This file simply stores the paths in order for your games to show up in the list. This time, instead of loading our games directory, we'll be adding a game manually. This will automatically add the game to our list. To do this, click File, then Boot Self Slash Elf. From here, you'll want to navigate into your specific game directory and find the user dir containing the file. This process recognizes bin files, elf files, and self files. When you open the file, RPCS3 will add it to the list and begin loading the game. But since we only wanted to add it to the list, I'll go ahead and stop the game from loading. Alright, now I'll demo how to download updates for your games. The first is with the game update tool I mentioned in the intro. For now, it's just a simple Visual Basic script. But if there's interest, I could create a GUI around it with more useful features such as downloading all updates at once, etc. To use it, simply double click it. It will prompt you for the game serial or ID. To get it, just right click your game in RPCS3 and select Copy Serial. Now just paste it in and click OK. It will retrieve all updates available for the game including download links for your convenience. Now you just download the updates you want. Unfortunately, updating your game to the latest available version will require installing all updates that came before it, which is where an option to download all updates at once would be handy. Let me know if this is something you'd be interested in in the comments. As I said before, the script is completely open source, so you can right click the file, select edit, and see all the code it runs. I added comments to explain what each piece does. This script requires no installation and should work on any Windows machine out of the box. Another method for downloading game updates is offered within the RPCS3 Discord server. To get game updates, you must be in the bot spam channel. You'll format your game update request like this. Let's try it. Using their example as a demo, you can see it returned a list of all available updates for Gran Turismo 5. Alright, you've got your game update and you're ready to install it. There are two ways. The first way is to click File, then Install Package. Next, you'll navigate to where you stored your update file. For the sake of consistency, I'll drop the update into my RPCS3 folder. Now just select the update and click Open. Depending on the size of the update, the time to install may vary. I like to see these confirmation messages, so I won't check the box. The second way to install game updates is to simply drag and drop the file onto your RPCS3 window. It will ask you to confirm the install. Click Yes. Click OK to the confirmation and you're done. This method is particularly nice when you want to install multiple updates at once. To do this, select all of your updates for your game and drag into the RPCS3 window. A window will pop up asking you to confirm the install order. Since it's critical you install all updates in order, you'll want to verify the order and rearrange using the up-down arrows if necessary. Then click install. Click OK to the confirmation message and you're done. Next we'll set up our controller. To begin, we'll click the pads icon. Select the API for your controller under handlers. If you have a PS3 controller, you'd use DualShock 3, a PS4 controller, you'd use DualShock 4, and if you have an Xbox controller, you'd use X Input. For this demo, I'm using an Xbox controller, so I'll select X Input. Now you'd simply click around to the different on-screen buttons and click the button or direction on your pad you'd like them mapped to. In the bottom right corner, you can adjust dead zones in your thumbsticks. This is useful if you have a thumbstick that's failing. Once your controller is set up to your liking, click save at the bottom to save and close the window. Global settings. There aren't many global settings we need to change. For the most part, the RPCS3 devs have set the defaults to the most widely compatible settings already. However, there are just a couple of minor tweaks we'll make. 
On the CPU tab, if you have a Ryzen, the only thing to verify is that Enable Thread Scheduler is checked as Ryzen's can take advantage of this setting. However, on Intel CPUs, this really has no effect, so checked or unchecked doesn't really matter. Next, we'll go over to the GPU tab. Here, you'll want to make sure your renderer is set to Vulkan. The general consensus from my research points to this being the best option regardless of your GPU. I will say that you'll for sure require Vulkan if you have a lower end GPU. Over here, and as shown before, some games will require right color buffers to be checked, but we won't do that under global settings, we'll do that on a per game basis, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Next, we'll come over to the emulator tab. Here you can set some emulator behaviors. Here is also where you'd find the FPS display. To turn on, check the Enable Performance Overlay box. You can also set the position of the overlay and information displayed. Finally, we'll come to the GUI tab. Here you can change the overall look and feel of the GUI. I prefer dark mode. But for the sake of this demo, we'll keep it light. Now just click save and we're done with global settings. Game specific settings. This is where you'll apply game specific settings and tweaks to optimize game performance. To modify settings for a specific game, simply right click the game in your list and select create custom configuration. As you can see, we have essentially the same settings, but now when modified, they'll only affect that game. There is a huge community around RPCS3 and they're always finding new tweaks and creating new patches to optimize performance. Through a combination of the RPCS3 compatibility page, as well as their wiki which is loaded with patches and tweaks to improve game performance for the most hard to run titles, you're pretty well covered. Well guys, that's going to conclude this guide. I hope you learned something useful, I know I learned a lot creating it. I tried to be as thorough as possible, but there is a lot to cover so if you saw something I missed or have something to add, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys again soon, and remember, life, uh, finds a way. <laughs>